All right. Good evening, everybody. It's about 6.01, so we are going to get started here tonight. Welcome. My name is Jim Ostrowski, and I work in Eagles Environmental Support Division. I'll be the moderator for tonight's hearing, and I'm glad to see you all are with us tonight uh, on this public hearing for the Enbridge Line 5 application for post tunnel construction involving potential wetland impacts. So a couple of quick housekeeping guidelines uh, for those of you who have not been on a hearing before with us, uh, you will notice that all lines are muted. It means you can hear us, but we can't hear you. I'll explain a little bit later on how we're going to unmute your line so you can make a comment. Uh, but for right now, you're muted. Uh, also, you notice that we are recording this meeting. So it is being recorded and will be posted on the Enbridge Line 5 website along with the other hearing re recordings. You'll be able to find it there. Um, and I'm gonna go through some other housekeeping stuff in just a moment. I think before we do that, I'm gonna turn it over to Teresa Seidel and she's going to uh, make a couple open remarks. So Teresa, go ahead. Thank you. Good evening, everybody, and thanks for joining us for the second of the resource permit application hearings. This is the final hearing and the final opportunity for verbal public comment, but we will have public comment going until October 19th. So we're just glad you joined us tonight and remember that during the hearing, we do not speak to you at all. This is not a question and answer period. It's an opportunity for you to get your, your opinions and comments based on the, regarding the applications on public record so that we have them and can uh, use those in making our decision as it relates to these applications. I simply wanna thank you for joining us and taking the time out of your evening to come tonight and present. And we look forward to hearing what you have to say. We'll be on camera listening, taking notes. So uh, please just, Make sure you get anything you want us to know about uh, the applications out here today. And again, if you have an opportunity to write written comments, we'll be taking those through my waters um, up until October 19th. So again, thank you for joining us tonight and we look forward to hearing what you have to say. All right, great, thanks, Teresa. And uh, I'm gonna have the rest of the staff that are here with us tonight, go ahead and turn your cameras on so everybody can see who's listening in and we'll do some quick introductions. So, uh, Joe, we'll start with you. Sure. Hi, everybody. Welcome and thanks for attending. I'm Joseph Haas. I'm a district supervisor with Environment Great Lakes and Energy Water Resources Division. Uh, I cover the Cadillac and Gaylord field offices. Uh, my responsibilities include administrating regulatory programs, uh, compliance and enforcement, uh, uh, wetlands, lakes, inland lakes and streams, floodplains, and Great Lakes coastal resources under applicable parts of the Natural Resources and Environmental Protection Act 1994, um, also known as Public Act 451 or NREPA. All right, thanks, James. Uh, good evening, um, my name is James Clift. I'm one of the deputy directors at EGLE. Okay, Luis. Hello everybody, I'm Luis Saldivia. I work for the Water Resources Division uh, of EGLE. Um, I am a, one of the managers in the field operations section, and I handle the Lakes uh, Michigan and Superior. And thank you for coming tonight to our hearing. And Ann. Hello, I'm Ann Garwood, uh, Supervisor of the Wetlands, Lakes and Streams Unit in Water Resources Division. Uh, we provide technical support to the district offices handling regulatory reviews such as this one. All right, and, and Matt, are you on? Yes, I am. Good evening, everyone. My name is Matt Tomlinson, and uh, I'm the events coordinator for EGLE and work out of the Environmental Support Division and will be serving as a co-host behind the scenes this evening for this hearing. Thank you. All right, thanks, Matt. So you'll be getting some chat messages from Matt tonight, a little bit here and there, as well as he's gonna help me with, uh, let me call off the names. All right, so, um, glad to have everyone here with us tonight. Uh, this, like Teresa said earlier, the hearing is a little more of a formal process, as, as you'll find out here. Uh, we did have public information sessions earlier uh, last month uh, that a lot of you, I'm sure, attended, which are much more informal. We had some Q&A. Today, we don't do questions and answers. We're here just to listen to you and your comments. 
And so you will notice it is, it is basically just me calling up names and you commenting. So at this point, uh, what I have to do as part of this formal process is, is read a hearing statement and it's a kind of a long hearing statement. So bear with us, I'm gonna be reading this off. And then what we're going to do is open it up for comment. So uh, for those of you that are on the phone, that's really what we're doing. We're just, uh, I'm, opening, I'm just gonna open it up with our official comments. So here we go. Uh, procedures for the hearing. This public hearing is the second of two public hearings to take comment on the Enbridge Energy Joint Permit Application or Resource Wetlands Application for, for a proposed tunnel under the Straits of Mackinac. The first public hearing on this application was held on October 1st. The department pre previously held two public information meetings on this application that included presentations on the proposed tunnel construction project and resource permit review of the project under authority of Part 303, Wetlands Protection, and Part 325, Great Lakes Submerged Lands of the Natural Resources and Environmental Protection Act, 1994, Public Act 451, as amended, NARIPA. Recordings of these public meetings are available to be viewed on the michigan.gov slash line five website. Enbridge proposes to construct a 21 foot diameter tunnel, approximately 3.6 miles long, connecting McGalpin Point, the lower peninsula, to Point Labarbe in the upper peninsula, un underneath the lake bed of the Straits of Mackinac. The proposed, the project's purpose is to replace the existing Line 5 dual pipelines crossing the Straits of Mackinac with a new 30 inch diameter pipeline within the tunnel for light crude oil and natural gas liquids. The tunnel will be constructed using a tunnel boring machine or TBM. Precast -pre concrete segmental lining will be installed as the tunnel is constructed and the annular space outside the tunnel's concrete lining will be filled with low permeability grout. A launch portal will be constructed in the uplands at the McGulpin Point, southern work area as the entry point for the tunnel boring machine with an exit point in the Point Labarbe northern work area. Approximately 194 cubic yards of clean aggregate fill would be discharged into a wetland area approximately 113 feet long, 16 feet wide, and 3.7 feet deep, 0 0.03 acres. to provide access around existing North Straits facility to construction and staging area to the north of the facility. The existing road, Boulevard Drive to the east will be widened to 20 feet in top width and up to 38 feet in base width, which would involve approximately 222 cubic yards of fill placed in seven wetland areas, totaling 3,468 square feet or 0 0.08 acres. Two outfall structures for treated water would be constructed in wetlands involving a 0.02 acre of wetland fill. Total proposed wetlands fill at Point Labarbe is 0.13 acres. Two water intake structures are proposed to be placed on Great Lakes bottom lands. Each with a base of approximately 10 feet by 10 feet would be installed on each side of the straits located approximately 280 feet offshore the northern work area in approximately 10 feet of water depth and located approximately 350 feet offshore the southern work area in 17 feet of water depth with a 6 to 12 inch diameter pipe connected to onshore water storage tanks. Each intake structure would be marked with a surface buoy and will be removed upon completion of the tunnel construction. A discharge pipe on Great Lakes bottoms lands would also be con connected to the southern intake, which would be used intermittently to discharge treated water. Compensatory mitigation. In place of wetland mit mitigation, treatment removal of an area of invasive Phragmites is proposed and a barrier plan has been proposed to address unauthorized vehicle impacts across Enbridge Point Lapar property. The proposal may affect Northern Long-Eared Bat, Houghton's Goldenrod, and Dwarf Lake Iris, or their critical habitat. A plant mitigation plan to address anticipated impacts to the two state-threatened plant species has been provided by Enbridge. Site clearing and grading is proposed to be completed during the winter months, 
meaning October 30th to March 15th. To, to minimize effects of environmental features such as nesting birds and roosting bats. Endangered species coordination for Houghton's goldenrod and dwarf lake iris is ongoing with the Michigan Department of Natural Resources, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, and U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. How, so how the comment process will work today. For those of you who pre-registered to attend today's hearing and indicated you would like to make a comment, we will call your name and unmute your microphone so you can make your comment. We will call your name in the order in which you registered. Once we have called the names of everyone who indicated they wanted to make a comment during registration, we'll open it up to comment from other attendees. At that time, if you have not made a comment and wish to do so, please click the raise hand icon to indicate you wish to make a comment. If calling in by phone only, please hit star nine on your phone to raise your hand. We will call on those who have their hand raised to make a comment in the general order in which their hand was raised. Each person will have three minutes to make their comment. I will indicate when you have one minute left and when your time has expired. If I indicate your time has expired, please wrap up your comments immediately so that we can allow the next person to make their comment. Please be sure to state your name and any organization you represent prior to starting your comment. Please note that we will not be responding to your comments or answering questions during the hearing. We will be simply listening to your comments for the record. If you would like to make a comment but do not wish to make a verbal comment today, you are welcome to submit a written comment to the department. Written comments may be submitted online in our MyWaters database. A link is being provided in the chat directly to the comment submittal form. Comments can also be submitted to the following address. Water Resources Division, Eagle, 2100 West M32, Gaylord, Michigan, 49735-9282, or by email at eagle, E-G-L-E, dash Enbridge, E-N-B-R-I-D-G-E, dash comments, C-O-M-M-E-N-T-S, at michigan.gov. This hearing is being recorded and your comments will be part of the information that EGLE will consider in the review of this application for proposed permits under authority of Part 303 Wetlands Protection and Part 325 Great Lakes Submerged Lands of the Natural Resources and Environmental Protection Act, 1994 Public Act 451 as amended. Comments received will not be responded to at this time, but will be included in response to public comment documents and be part of the permit record. All comments and information received will be available in MyWaters, our online database. The public comment period is open until October 19th, 2020. Okay, that is the end of my official public uh, comment or public statement uh, to start this hearing. Uh, if you missed it, maybe I think a few of you joined kind of while I was reading that. If you missed it, just to remind you tonight, what we're going to start doing is I have a list here of uh, people when you registered. I have a spreadsheet that shows when you registered and whether or not you indicated you wanted to make a comment when you pre-registered. So I have that here and I'll start with the first person that registered and work my way down that list. Um, after we're done going through those people, we will open it up. And at that time, if you have not made a comment yet, like I said, you can raise your hand um, using the raise hand icon. Or if you're on the phone, you can hit star nine and we'll call you that way. I uh, just want to let you know that there, there may be several people who attended a different hearing and also registered for this one. So you might hear us call off names and they might not be in attendance uh, just to let you know that. So. Uh, that might happen. Okay, remember you have three minutes. And um, what I'm going to do is call off, you know, the name and I'll also indicate the person that's on deck to, to be ready next so that you're ready, just to let you know. And what you'll see is when we unmute you, you have a little box pop up on your screen that says you've been unmuted and you hit it and then it'll open it up for us to see. Or you might have a little microphone that'll appear and you just click unmute on that. 
So uh, that's how we're going to do it. All right, so uh, Matt uh, is gonna help me unmute people and find them. And I'm looking at my list here of people that are gonna comment. And my first person on my list is Jennifer McKay. And after Jennifer McKay, we got Mike Wolzinski. Uh, Jennifer McKay is here and I have a muted your line. Just make sure that you uh, state your name and any organization you're with. And I will start my clock for three minutes. Go ahead, you're unmuted. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Great. Um, so thank you for the opportunity to provide comments on the proposed Line 5 Embridge Straits Tunnel. My name is Jennifer McKay. I'm the Policy Director at Tip of the Mint Watershed Council. The Watershed Council is dedicated to protecting our lakes, streams, wetlands, groundwater, and the Great Lakes. After reviewing the permit application, the Watershed Council recommends denial of the permit because of the disruption to the aquatic resources is unacceptable, the issuance of the permit is not in the public interest, and feasible and prudent alternatives exist. To highlight some of the primary issues of concern, impacts to Great Lakes coastal wetlands. Coastal wetlands are considered to be some of the most valuable ecological areas in the Great Lakes. They provide critical habitat for fish and wildlife, erosion control, water quality protection, and recreational opportunities. The site of the proposed tunnel project is within one of the most pristine Great Lakes coastal wetlands in Lakes Michigan and Huron. Threatened endangered species. Houghton's goldenrod and dwarf lake iris, which are both federally listed threatened species, are present on the north side of Mackinac County. Based on a 2019 survey, approximately 3,777 Houghton goldenrods plants and 7,757 dwarf lake iris plants will be impacted by the project. Enbridge pr proposes to relocate only 50% of these plants to mitigate for the loss. Migratory birds. The Straits of Mackinac are important from water bird migration with tens to hundreds of thousands of individuals passing through the area each spring and fall. In addition, summer breeding birds include some federally endangered species such as the piping plover and other species with special value and protected status such as bald eagles. Tribal fishery rights. The proposed project occurs within the area of the 1836 Treaty Territory for Michigan tribes. Five of the 12 federally recognized Indian tribes in Michigan are party to that 1836 Treaty of Washington, which reserves hunting and fishing rights throughout the ceded territory. The Straits of Mackinac are located in the center of that ceded territory. Cultural resources. One minute. There's a significant prehistoric uh, remains that are dating back 10,000 to 8,000 years before present on the lake bottom that are extremely vulnerable to disturbance and will be obliterated without a trace by the proposed tunneling. They're a unique piece of Michigan's past that should not simply be brushed aside and destroyed. Environmental impact statement, a full environmental impact statement to assess all potential impacts of the project is not being conducted by Eagle. And feasible and prudent alternatives. The applicant has failed to consider off-site locations or the use of a location other than the pro proposed location more importantly, alternative methods that would accomplish the basic project purpose. Therefore, an adequate alternatives analysis was not completed for the proposal and the burden of this proof was not met by the applicant. We'll provide written comments which will elaborate on all of these points further and more. And so again, we urge Eagle to give careful consideration to the comments and deny the permit application as proposed. Thank you again for the opportunity to share these comments with you. All right, thank you. Okay, going to our next person, uh, Mike Wolzinski, and then Patty Peak is after that. Okay, I don't see Michael logged on, and I do not see Patty logged on. Okay, so neither of them are in attendance. Uh, Kiana Courtney, and then after that, Sean McBreedy. Yep, Kiana's at the top here with her hand up. Okay, Kiana Courtney, you are unmuted. You can go ahead, you've got three minutes. Hi, thank you for the opportunity to provide comment today. My name is Kiana Courtney and I am a, st I am a staff attorney at the Environmental Law and Policy Center. We also represent the Michigan Climate Action Network. Enbridge's resource permit application poses more questions than solutions to the problem of Line 5 running under the Straits of Mackinac. 
Accordingly, ELPC and MICAN request that EGLE deny Enbridge's uh, resource permit application. We will submit additional, additional written comments to EGLE, but wish to highlight the following points today. Um, first, the proposed tunnel should be considered in light of, an, of the existence and use of the pipeline. While the new tunnel and pipeline are being constructed, the aging and dangerous existing pipeline could continue to exist to five to 10 more years. There are also harms to the treaty protected rights caused by this. Um, in addition, the lease will result in a 99 year commitment to fossil fuels, which runs counter to the recent executive order uh, by Governor Whitmer con committing to carbon neutrality by 2050. Second, the permit application is incomplete with unknown impacts to residents in nearby park and resources. There should be an environmental impact statement completed with the opportunity for the public to comment. The mitigation plan for affected endangered species and the consideration of migratory board birds is inadequate. Not only is this information missing from the record, the tunnel plans are also incomplete. Eagle should not move forward until it has this information. The application also lacks information about the risks posed by drilling through the lake bed and how to proceed if there is a collapse while drilling. Enbridge should not be allowed to proceed blindly without more studies being done on what could happen and how to respond to the risks. The permit application in addition fails to provide feasible prudent alternatives as it affects wetlands and natural resources in the straits. Third, the permit application fails to consider how the impacts of climate change will affect this project. The Just impacts of our changing climate are real and we have seen them with record lake levels and increased storm events. This tunnel will perpetuate the impacts of greenhouse gas emissions that impact Michiganders, and this analysis should be a part of any environmental assessment or environmental impact statement completed before a decision is made on the permit application. This impact is not attenuated, but manifested in perpetuating the end use of this pipeline for 99 years. The application should also take into account for climate-driven shifts to the flood, flood, flood plain and water level that would affect the project's impact to the wetlands. Eagle cannot ignore these climate factors. Ultimately, this tunnel is not in the public interest. Accordingly, Eagle should include these impacts in its analysis of whether to award the resource permit. Eagle should and must deny the permit. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, looking at my list here, next person, uh, Sean McBreedy. Then after Sean McBreedy is Diane Wells. Matt, do you see Sean McBreedy? Yeah, on the... I do not see Sean. Okay, do you see Diane Wells on the list? Yes. Okay, Diane Wells, you're unmuted now, so you can go ahead and you got three minutes. Wonderful, thank you very much. My name is Diane Wells, born and raised in Michigan. Um, I love my state and I love the environment. I will keep my comments brief as I will follow up by submitting written comments to EGLE. I spoke at Monday's hearing opposing uh, the wastewater permit application and I would like to note that the comments I expressed um, on Monday are also relevant to the uh, conversation today. So I'm not going to um, restate them, but they are still very much relevant. Um, I, um, I'm concerned about the negative effect to wildlife and exceedingly concerned about uh, the bentonite, which sticks to everything and can't be cleaned up. Um, it would devastate the environment. What's the plan when there is an accident? It's so easy to say, we've taken every precaution and we've thought of everything and there won't be an accident. Then when there is one, there's nothing to say. There's nothing left to say except, oops, sorry. You can't put the genie back in the bottle and the stakes are far too high here. In the span of about 15 years, Enbridge has had over 300 hazardous liquid spills with nearly 50 of them to equipment installed less than 10 years prior to the incident. I'm sure they took every precaution then with those projects and over three times has said, oops, sorry, leaving our environment, wildlife and residents left holding the bag. I really echo the sentiments expressed by Jennifer McKay and Kiana McCourtney. I thought that um, their comments were incredibly um, well presented and um, I'm in full support of those. Um, Enbridge is, they're not people who care about the environment and I urge you to deny Enbridge's application for this permit. Thank you very much for the opportunity to share my thoughts this evening. Okay, thank you. Um, for those of you who didn't notice yet, um, in the chat, 
function. If you look on your uh, Zoom toolbar, there's a chat function and uh, Matt's dropped in some some links for you to, to look at if you'd like to make a direct written comment in there as well as the email and um, address that I mentioned earlier. Okay, so uh, next person on my list is uh, Jennifer Cola Giovanni. Oh, that, she's not on. Okay, she's not in attendance. Uh, Kevin McComas. Sir Kevin McComas. No, nope, I'm not seeing Kevin either. Okay, no Kevin McComas. Uh, okay, moving down then, uh, Horst Schmidt. Uh, nope, he's not logged on either. All right. And again, just want to remind people that uh, when you registered, you had the option to say you wanted to make a public comment. Um, and right now I'm going through that list of people who said they did want to make a comment. Um, if they're not here, it's because they registered and probably just uh, are not in attendance tonight. Um, okay, they're going on about Wayne Schmidt. Yeah, I'm going to unmute Wayne. Okay, Wayne Schmidt, you're unmuted. Uh, you can go ahead. Remember to restate your name and any organization you're with. Certainly. Senator Wayne Schmidt from the 37th Senate District, which includes both uh, Emmett, Sheboygan, and Mackinac counties. And I just want to say first thank you to the Department of Environment, Great Lakes, and Energy for holding these meetings and allowing myself and my constituents to participate in the process. Um, Line 5 Tunnel Project will ensure that our Great Lakes remain protected and that our residents in northern Michigan and the Upper Peninsula have access to reliable and affordable propane for heating their homes. Many of my constituents rely, on the, rely upon this affordable energy that Line 5 uh, provides. The Great Lakes Tunnel Project was agreed to in Public Act 359 of 2018, which I voted in support of and helped create the Tunnel Authority. The tunnel is a common sense solution that protects our Great Lakes while providing the energy that we all rely upon. In addition, the project will provide numerous jobs for our residents and provide a boost to our local economies. Enbridge has done their due diligence for this project by designing workspace areas to avoid and reduce environmental impacts, proposed mitigation plans to offset minimal impacts to wetlands and plants, and ensuring that there will be no impacts to recreational commercial uses in the Straits. Again, I'd like to say thank you to the Department of Environment, Great Lakes and Energy for holding these meetings and gathering public input. And I would respectfully ask that you approve Enbridge's application to proceed with placing the Line 5 pipeline within a tunnel below the Straits of Mackinac. Thank you. Okay, thank you, thank you sir. Okay, uh, next person up for comment is Nancy Bailey. The answer after Nancy Bailey is Linda Turek. Okay, I'm not seeing Nancy Bailey on and not seeing Linda either. No, no Linda Turek, okay. Uh, Nicole Bieber or Biber? Yep. She just disappeared. Let me see if maybe oh, she, she raised her hand. hand. Okay. She, well, she was, maybe not. <laughs> Let's see here. I'll go back down to the end. She, I think okay. she's raising her I hand. See her. So. Okay. I see her. Hang on, Nicole. <laughs> All right, I've unmuted you. Okay, okay Nicole, you're hey. you're unmuted now. Go ahead. <laughs> Thank you. Bonjour. My name is Nicole Viber. Uh, I guess if I'm with an organization, I work in the public schools with elementary school children. I'm also an indigenous mother of three with the Little Travers Bay Band of Odawa. Um. I consider myself a water protector and I consider the women who have made comments so far also water protectors, whether you're a tribal person or not, if you uh, care about our waters and our generations to come, that is who you are. So why deny this permit? When I think about that, I think of the word devastation. Devastation. It is not worth anything to lose these waters the way they are. They need restoration and protection. They don't need further threats. When we talk about critical and endangered species, these species are our relatives. That's our teachings. So it's not only with the treaties uh, that 
agreements were made for hunting and fishing, this is a necessity to our spirits. Debussin dizawin is a word in our language. It means humility, but that's a rough translation. It means to think lower of yourself in relation to the rest of creation. This is a really low bar we're asking here that no, we no longer see our relations and our people threatened with poison. There's new measures of progress. It doesn't have to be what the speaker said of affordability. This is not affordable to lose our lands, our waters, our species, our relatives to an oil spill. There is no assurance. Enbridge has presided over many leaks so far. We're talking about the health of our planet, which we require for the health of our bodies and of our minds. And again, as I say, as our spirits, the word posterity is in the US and Michigan preambles of our constitutions. Posterity is all future generations, seven generations teachings. We respect our youth. We respect our water. And this can't go on any longer. It's irreplaceable, these waters and the lives of the animals and the people. Enbridge and those fossil fuel interests, they must get the message that we are moving on. We don't want to depend on the poison anymore. There's new alternatives. We don't need the fleeting jobs. We can do the real work of protection and restoration. They're not to be trusted. They have skewed priorities of profits over people, and we need to protect our wetlands, our tribal rights, and all our future generations. Miigwech. Thank you. Okay, uh, Joy Smith. Joy Smith in attendance. Not seeing Joy. Okay, uh, Bentley Johnson is next. Yep. Okay, Bentley Johnson, uh, go ahead. Can you, you, uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Go ahead. Uh, um, sorry, I'm just finding the quiet spot here in the house. Um, understand. Bentley Johnson, Bentley Johnson, uh, Senior Partnerships Manager for the Conservation Voters. And um, I'd like to make a comment and first of all, urge Eagle to reject this permit and tunnel proposal. Um, there are reasonable and prudent alternatives. Uh, to this tunnel, to this pipeline, and um, and need, especially as you look at the overall renewable energy trends and the goals that we'd like to to move to as a state in terms of reality by 2050. Um, more the the this is a resource that is our most valuable asset in this state next to our people, which is the Great Lakes. And the drink that people um, use in the Straits of Mackinac and the surrounding area, as well as through the entire state. And this, this proposal is cl clearly lacking and flawed and missing key pieces of information. It has been provided in different ways and will be provided by uh, several groups in detailed um, written comments, uh, which Michigan League of Conservation Voters looks forward to um, in, uh, in writing. Um, flag um, the wastewater concerns and the um, potential for bentonite um, contamination, um, which can uh, damage uh, fish habitat and, and uh, the, the bottomlands. The, the design of the tunnel itself in terms of, in terms of its B shape. Uh, and um, the potential for, um, for and risk from natural gas liquids and uh, methane. In one minute. Um, just, uh, I would just urge Eagle to, to on a full environmental impact uh, statement and study and look at the comprehensive impacts 
of this uh, project and proposal. And because right now I'm, we are quite concerned that all the impacts are siloed between different agencies, different experts, and no one is looking at the big picture in terms of what a fossil fuel artery for the next 99 years could mean for our state and the risks that we could be um, taking on financially as taxpayers, um, as uh, the fossil fuel um, bubble uh, is likely to pop. Thank Stay you nice. very much for thank you very much for the opportunity to to give comment and uh, I'll turn the time back to you. All right, thank you, Mr. Johnson. Uh, just wanted to let you know, uh, Mr. Johnson, that a couple spots during your comment uh, you did break up on our end a little bit uh, here and there, so uh, you might want to submit if more of a written comment to just to make sure we didn't miss anything that you had stated. So uh, in the chat box, there is a link to make a direct written comment. Uh, I think something with your audio maybe was breaking up. Just to let you know. Okay, so uh, looking at my list here, uh, Leonard Page is my next person, then Ursila Nellajoy. Hey, Leonard, have... I'm muted. I'm sorry, do you have, do you have Leonard Page? Yeah, I just unmuted him. Oh, and I'm gonna do it again. not seeing him. He's, he's in a list there. Yeah, okay, he's at the top. Should be good to go. Okay, uh, Leonard Page, you should be able to unmute yourself. How about that? There, there, there you go, go ahead. You got three minutes, sir. Okay, thank you. I am the uh, vice chair of the Straits of Mackinac Alliance. I live in Sheboygan, Michigan. Uh, we are a group of uh, uh, homeowners living primarily on the uh, Straits itself. Uh, we are ground zero for uh, a spill from line five. And I, I want to make two observations. First, let's go back to uh, where did the tunnel idea come from? Well, it was first proposed in the June 2017 report uh, by Na Dynamic Risk, uh, where they mentioned the possibility of tunneling or trenching. Uh, Enbridge made a comment uh, in response to that draft report dated August 4th, 2017. And uh, the interesting thing is that they were very critical of these proposals. Uh, their covenant said, and I'm quoting, however, the report's analysis of the trenching and tunneling alternatives appears to significantly understate the technical difficulties and likely cost of such a project. Uh, I would direct uh, Eagle's attention to page eight of exhibit A, which was attached to that uh, uh, August uh, 2017 letter, where uh, uh, Enbridge at that time made admissions against their current position, uh, suggesting that the uh, disturbances to the local community uh, and the risk of uh, uh, construction were, were rather high. Uh, that is quite a different uh, tone than they're taking now. And I would suggest that uh, Enbridge's initial reaction to the tunneling proposal uh, perhaps is more accurate. In one minute. Okay, my other point is uh, we are missing the elephant in the room here. Uh, most of us know that 20% of the time, uh, a new line five segment in the enclosed tunnel would be pumping natural gas liquids. Uh, natural gas liquids are highly explosive. Uh, the tunnel design would be an inverted V. Uh, and if you look at their uh, 
their permit applications here, you will find that neither Enbridge or any of its consultants uh, mention the risk associated with a leak in line five in a uh, uh, tunnel underneath the straits. That's three minutes, sir. I, I thank you very much for the opportunity. All right, thank you, sir. Okay, let's move on. Uh, next person is our Sila Nellajoy, and after that, it's Joe McHugh. Uh, or Sila, you are unmuted. Hi, hi, this is Ursula Nellajoy. Uh, my father was a county commissioner for uh, many years in Washtenaw County and he, in the 70s and helped uh, to make less toxic choices for our Huron River that runs through Ann Arbor. And I stand with uh, the um, wealth of documented um, uh, documentation that this is a poor, that making a tunnel, having a pipeline under our freshwater uh, is, um, is, a, um, is a, it's a poor idea. And it's, um, I, I'm grateful to the scientists and the legal uh, people that uh, have documented the many numerous reasons why it's time to move away from this paradigm of extractive wealth for a few, for a small few, that I understand that it's not true that uh, the, um, the fuel comes to Michigan or is, or is something that we need to continue to depend upon, certainly. Um, I stand with the indigenous wisdom. I stand with the earth, the, the land defenders and water protectors. These are very important to me. I am the public in, in a Michigan who needs these water to stay as pristine as they are and to even work towards more um, better ways of in, working with nature instead of um, the plan that is that you spoke of earlier at the beginning of this. I don't want all of that uh, as far as the this tunnel doesn't sound like a good idea. Um, I guess that's what I wanted to say. Thank you so much for having this time to comment. Um, we should humble ourselves in the sight of the Mother Earth um, and try to learn what she knows, not try to impose our will. It has not worked. Um, thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, next person up is Joe McHugh and then uh, Senator Egg McBroom. So, Joe McHugh, you are unmuted, so you can go ahead. All right, you can hear me now? Yes, we can. All right, excellent. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for having me. Thank you for hosting this. Again, my name is Joe McHugh. I'm a Michigan resident and an independent candidate for president of the United States of America. Uh, and to that end, I'd like to register my opposition uh, to this Line 5 proposal. As a Marine Corps officer, we're taught to not accept any unnecessary risks. And Line 5 has already spilled over 1.1 million gallons of fuel into our natural environment causing significant damage to our lakes, our wetlands, our communities, our economies, and our ecologically sensitive areas. Now to authorize this proposal would indeed be an unnecessary risk. Now the line is, is to provide heating for homes and businesses in Northern Michigan, and geothermal heating is a clean, safe, affordable, EPA recommended and pollution-free alternative to fossil fuel based heating. To authorize this pipeline where safer, more cost effective alternatives are available would demonstrate one thing and one thing only, that regardless of which party is in power, our elected officials show a reckless disregard for the health and safety of our people, our economy, and our environment. Liberty is clean air, liberty is fresh water, Liberty is healthy, organic food. Liberty is money that retains value over time and a constitution that is applied evenly to all people at all times by default and without exception, none of which is possible 
as long as we remain reliant upon oil and gas to power our economy. I urge you to reject this pipeline and to write in Joe McHugh for President of the United States of America to restore liberty in America. Visit libertystrikesback.com for more information and stand proud and stand strong for our environment and our economy in America. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, next up is uh, Senator, Senator Ed McBroom. Then after that, Lisa Patrell. Oh, I gotta find him, he just jumped in my list. Okay. Hey, Senator McBroom. You are a man. Okay, you can go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Well, thanks so much for uh, allowing me to participate this way. Um, and thank you for uh, the process that uh, Eagle's going through on the issue. Um, I would just want to, you know, piggyback off of some of the earlier comments where people are talking about, you know, alternatives or, you know, it's too, too risky for the, for the Great Lakes. And comment that I, I couldn't I couldn't agree more in the sense that we have to consider what our alternatives are and, and the dangers to the Great Lakes but my confusion is with anyone who believes that somehow the tunnel is a greater risk to the Great Lakes than 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 current status quo or our other alternatives of trying to import our energy and needs by rail or truck or some other means I think those are really missing the evidence and the data that's been researched numerous times ad nauseum at this point. And so our alternatives, you know, we talked about geothermal with some of the callers and yet you go around the UP and there's places where you can't even put in a water well because of the rock formations. You can go around and say trucks and trains are our solution, but that didn't help us in the winter of 2014. We needed the energy that came from line five and there were times where it wasn't available and we saw the devastation, not to big energy corporations, not to those with deep pockets, but to the people of the upper peninsula and the northern lower. These were real impacts on everyday people. And contrary to what some dismissively say is, oh, it'll just be the cost of a past year or two every month. This was real money. Places were shut down, businesses went under, homes were left cold and we depend on this energy. So if we want the energy, we want people to keep living here and enjoying their freedom and their life that they have and the work that they can do, we also have to provide them with a safe and reliable energy source that's affordable and can be promoted in a way that's safe to the environment. So how is this tunnel not a win-win for all of those goals? One minute. So I encourage the, uh, the department to look this over thoroughly and certainly make recommendations if they're necessary. But the portals that we're talking about for the approaches are a tiny impact of less than an acre. The bridge itself has a far greater impact on the lake bottom, the lake shores, the movement of animals than these portals for the pipeline will ever have. And the additional security for our energy future uh, can't be beat by the idea of the tunnel. So I strongly encourage you to approve this. Thank you for your time. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, uh, next up is Lisa Patrell. Lisa Patrell, you are uh, muted. You can go ahead and uh, start your comment. Thank you. Um, I wanted to uh, talk about the other side of uh, public health. Last time I spoke about municipal water supplies and the affluent that was going to be discharged. This time with the retention ponds, I wanted to address uh, the potential threat to residential wells as there's been no study done because these are retention ponds and not detention ponds where the design is to allow the affluent, the waste product to in parts uh, be trickled down back into the groundwater. I also wanted to address the lack of the environmental impact study. Even the animals that have been selected by Eagle and by the Army Corps and engineers, uh, they have emitted the piping plover, which is, in which is a threatened species that nest along the very site that will be impacted by the construction. Uh, they have not taken in any aquatic species 
even the Lake Sturgeon, which is on the threatened list in Michigan. Um, but uh, I uh, recently um, had a correspondence with my state senator because there was something that was bothering me from one of the last webinars when, when Eagle was representing that Enbridge would abide by all safety standards of Michigan. Well, because I was very active in the lame duck legislature, that made me think of uh, the House Bill of 2017, 4205, that amended our um, law of uh, public act 602. We know it as state not stricter than federal. It's the very thing that got Michigan into a very difficult mess so we couldn't clean up PFAS because there are no federal regulations for PFAS. Um, and because the body of, of what's in the affluent, uh, these undisclosed chemicals are gonna be put into the lakes, uh, Enbridge's um, presentation to Eagle that Eagle then was relaying to the public seemed hey, disingenuous. I want to uh, bring up a uh, correspondence. Um, uh, Michigan, um, uh, because of the permit Eagle has uh, applied for, it's under uh, Section 1622 Standard Industrial Classification for Bridge Tunnel Elevated Highway. Federal regulations under this category uh, require no specific requirements for the amount of wastewater that can be discharged or to the amount of pollutants. This disturbed me greatly because when Eagle was asked what toxic chemicals were going to be introduced that are either going to be in these retention ponds in the wetlands or discharged into our surface water, we were told as a public they hadn't been disclosed yet, is the real answer, Eagle doesn't care because they don't need to know. Thank you very much. The day, last day to comment is October 18th, the word until does not include October 19th. Public comments must be submitted to Eagle by the end of business day on Friday, October 18th. Thank you. Okay, thank you. We're gonna now, oops, there you go. Okay, so uh, that's the end of my list of people who have indicated during pre-registration that they wanted to make a comment. Uh, at this time now, we're going to open it up to those who have not commented yet to see if you'd like to make a comment. And I just want to remind everybody that um, if you want to make a comment and you haven't done so already, you can click the raise hand icon on your Zoom toolbar. Uh, if you're calling in by phone, and I can see there's a few people on the phone who have called in, you just hit star nine and that raises your hand and we will call on you by your phone number. So that's how we're going to do that. Um, and we still got about 37 people logged in just to let you know. Uh, so the first person I see here is actually one of our phone callers and it's the person with the phone number that's ending in 072. So if you would, we just unmuted your line, make sure you state your name and any organization you're with. So phone number 072, you just have to unmute your line. It should tell you how to do that. There you go. Oops. Um, this is this is Kiana Courtney. So I already went. It's showing oh, okay. my, I guess it's showing me separately. Okay. Okay, Miss Courtney, thank you. We that's weird. It had you up as a phone number too. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. All right. So uh, next person that's got their hand raised, uh, it's just showing as Liz. So Liz, L-I-Z, we have unmuted you, so make sure you give us your name. Thank you. Organization. Can yeah, go you ahead. hear me now? Yep, we can hear you. Okay, great. Um, I've got you on two computers here. I thank you so much for doing all of this. Um, my name is Elizabeth Storm. I was born in Iowa City, Iowa. I was raised in the Great Lakes state of Michigan. My agricultural background, uh, led me to train as an attorney, not a vet. I work with nonprofits and artists, and um, I'm submitting my comments already. I've already submitted my comments, and actually I recorded them because this is very emotional. You're killing life. 
I uploaded it to SoundCloud. If you want to look for Elizabeth Storm, Climate Change, Line 5, I posted it there and submitted it. This is very important. I attended on July 11, 2018, a hearing by MTech Water Division at the time regarding the proposed additions of anchors. Snippets of what I submitted to, the, uh, to that public comment are in a form letter dated September 26, 2018, regarding the PFAS, Michigan Water Crisis, Federal Spending Oversight and Emergency Management to the U.S. Senate Committee in D.C. on Homeland Security and Governmental Affairs Subcommittee on Federal Spending Oversight and Emergency Management. This is an emergency. We have one bridge to the Upper Peninsula. You say Enbridge is only considering a tunnel as an alternative form of energy. Not geothermal, not solar, not wind, even though in California the wind panels caused a fire, PG&E is still in a lawsuit about that. Um, there is a, they have tunnel vision and have not considered the difficult um, life alternative choice <laughs> that they can make. Hydraulic technology and water seminars that are provided by Michigan State University um, discuss the fragile line between salinity and fresh water. The end result of this will be salt water in the Great Lakes. They will try to contain that. One and they will contain it. Um, it will, but it will remove all of the life in, that, in this region of the planet. I uh, grew up in Petoskey, Michigan. I don't know if you know where that is. It's about, it wasn't on the map in the 80s and 90s. It is now uh, near Harbor Springs. It is Emmett County and we are right here in, in this danger zone. In the autumn of 2017, Michigan Governor Rick Snyder announced an agreement demanding safeguards along end bridges, Energy Line 5. This is an independent decision we're making. This is not about Republicans and Democrats. Line 5 runs across 400 bodies of water in Michigan en route from Superior, Wisconsin to Sarnia, Ontario. It's not limited to the Osabo River. It's not limited to the Black Indian River, the Manistique River, the Rapid River, the Sturgeon Rivers, and Lake Ogebic, where there have already been leeches and, dis and um, disasters. That's three and minutes. These are, yeah. Think, yeah, I'm not going to get through all of this. <laughs> the, the, I submitted these through SoundCloud. I recorded them in 2010. Line line six ruptured in Kalamazoo River. This was the largest 1.2 million gallons of crude oil. It has been mentioned before in the U.S. history. Um, in Gaylord, Michigan, which is 45 minutes from Petoskey. Okay, ma'am, we're going to have to ask you to start wrapping up, please. Thank you. I I really I submitted these already. This is um, the, the importance here is alternative energy. Make the long term commitment. Make the long term commitment. All right. Thank, thank you, ma'am. Um, and yeah, if you, if you don't have enough time here to make your full statement, uh, of course, you can make your comment written um, through the email, through, through email or online in My Waters. And I'll bring up that. It's in the chat. There's a direct link to it as well. So if there's more things that you feel you, you want to say in the statement, that's where, how you can submit them. Um, looking at my board here, uh, next person who's got their hand up is Sharon McLeod. Uh, Sharon McLeod, you are unmuted. You should be able to unmute yourself if you don't see it there. Okay, uh, you're, you're yeah. unmuted, you can go ahead. Hi, good evening. I was at the meeting the other night mm -hmm. and now I'm hearing about uh, our wetlands. And if you don't mind, I'd, I'd like to tell a little story about the wetlands, one of which is O'Neill Lake, which I'm sure Ms. Wells is quite familiar with this tragic story. Uh, it's the accident of letting the water out of our dam with all the 150 different kinds of species that have gone and gone forever. And then it's, oh, well, that was an accident. We're sorry. And I'm seeing the same scenario should this pipeline go through the same thing? It's going to be another accident, another oh well. And the uh, lakes of Michigan are the land of 150 or more species of fish we're trying to keep. And I would like to keep it that way personally for years to come. And I, I don't agree with Enbridge. I think it's a, just a bad idea. 
And that's about all I can say. Okay, thank you. All right, next person up for comment with their hand raised is Aubrey Macau Laduc. You are unmuted, you can go ahead. Good evening, can everyone hear me? Yes, we can. Very good. Um, hello, uh, my name is Aubrey Mako Leduc. I'm the environmental specialist with Bay Mills Indian Community. I'm offering these comments tonight on behalf of the sovereign nation of Bay Mills Indian Community. Bay Mills is a sovereign sig signatory of the 1836 Treaty of Washington, which ceded territory to the United States for the creation of the state of Michigan. In that treaty, Bay Mills reserved the right to hunt, fish, and gather throughout that ceded territory including the Great Lakes and the Straits of Mackinac. Currently, Eagle lacks sufficient detail regarding Enbridge's tunnel permit design and lacks sufficient information on how to mitigate the harmful impacts that will result from its construction. Eagle and Enbridge have still not answered the pressing questions from tribal nations on how water quality will not be impacted in such ways to destroy the fisheries of the Great Lakes. In addition, Enbridge's application is lacking a wetlands mitigation plan, lacking adequate threatened and endangered species mitigation plan, lacking accurate cultural and archeological survey in the Straits of Mackinac, and lacking a structural feasibility assessments on the tunnel to be independently verified. As a sovereign gover government with the resp responsibility of managing and protecting the Great Lakes, Bay Mills opposes the placement of Line 5 in a tunnel beneath the Straits of Mackinac because it lengthens the life of a corroded, dented, aging pipeline that is an immediate threat to the vast ecosystem of the Great Lakes, a threat to the treaty protected rights of tribes, a threat to the cultural resource that is the Straits of Mackinac, and provides very limited value for our state's families and businesses. Our people, the Anishinaabe, have a teaching that says the decisions we make today should result in a sustainable world seven generations into the future. It reminds us to understand that the decisions we make are not limited to the immediate concerns of today, but instead have implications long after we are gone. We urge the Department of Environment, Great Lakes and Energy to adopt this teaching as well and evaluate the risks and harms that Line 5 poses to all 645 miles of this pipeline throughout the state of Michigan and evaluate what this decision will really mean for the future of everyone. I speak for the 99% of miles, many, many more wetlands that remain at great risk from the entire length of this pipeline. Given the risks and harms to species, economy, wetlands, water quality, cultural resources, and tribal treaty rights, it is a pipeline that should be decommissioned as quickly as possible. Miigwech. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, everyone. Um, I don't see any more hands raised right now, so I want to open it up and remind you if you'd like to make a comment, that's what we're here for tonight. Um, you just have to click the raise hand icon and I'll wait for a minute here. Um, or if you're on the phone, remember you just hit star nine and you can make a make a comment via the phone. Um, while we're waiting, I want to bring up, here we go, um, other ways to submit your public comment. Oops, there we go. Uh, through My Waters. And there's a link there also, it's in the chat. If you want to click the direct link in the chat also um, by email. And for those of you on the phone, I'm going to restate the email address for you. It's eagle, E-G-L-E, dash Enbridge, E-N-B-R-I-D-G-E, dash comments, C-O-M-M-E-N-T-S, at michigan.gov. You can also uh, send your comments in by mail if you'd like at Water Resources Division at Eagle, 2100 West M32, Gaylord, Michigan, 49735. I'm looking at my hands raised and looks like we got a person here on the phone. And this is a person that's phone numbers ends in 409. So Matt, can you unmute 409?
I've unmuted them on my end. Okay. Uh, if you have a phone number ending in 409, you just need to unmute on your end and there'll be a little prompt that tells you what to do to unmute. Okay, um, if for some reason you're unable to unmute, just want to remind you that you can submit your comments online. Um, I'm gonna do another call for people that have their hand raised. Anybody with their hand raised wants to raise their hand? We do have another hand raised here. Uh, Michael Lentz. Okay, Michael Lentz, we're unmuting your line. You can go ahead, you have three minutes. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, yeah, I just um like this uh, comment about what everybody else was saying, um, the environmentalists and uh, um, tribal um, lands and organizations that uh, it, that they're able to um, get five million gallons of wastewater a day is ridiculous. And um, you know the people have spoken on this and commented a lot. I know that um, you've allowed a lot of days for that, and I appreciate that. So. Um, just want to say that the people I've spoken at, this is not the right thing to do. And our environment, our Great Lakes are precious and we need to keep them that way. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Kim, okay, not seeing another, any other hands raised. So with that, Okay, just want to remind you, um, I'm going to read the closing comments, so we'll close down and I'll let Teresa uh, make any closing remarks she wants to after that. Uh, but again, on the screen is the other ways to submit comments if you want. Um, I am going to now read our closing statement, which officially closes the hearing. Um, as a reminder, the public comment period for accepting written comments is open until October 19th, 2020. We will consider all comments received prior to making a final permit decision. Written comments may be submitted online in our My Waters database. Directions can be found in documents you can access in the webinar. So you can see it online here and on the chat. Uh, comments can also be submitted to the following address, Water Resources Division, Eagle, 2100 West M32, Gaylord, Michigan, 49735. 9282 or at email address eagle e g l e dash enbridge e n b r i d g e dash comments at michigan.gov thank you for your comments and cooperation we appreciate your interest and that you took the time to be here today the public hearing is now closed thank you again all right, so I want to thank everyone for joining us. Uh, Teresa is there. Uh, Teresa, you want to make some closing remarks for us? Just, uh, I just kind of echoing what you said, Jim, is thank you for joining us tonight. Please note that public comments are open until 1159 on Monday, October 19th. So we will be taking written comments right up until uh, 1159 on Monday, October 19th. So please make sure you get any comments in that you want to submit in writing, especially if they're more technical in nature, that's very helpful to us. So thank you again, and we look forward to seeing what you provide.